Today, I'm going to be talking to you all about mobile automation best practices. We will be covering kind of a lot of basics and basics and strategy, especially for testing and automation with mobile as well. So just to help you guys get started as fast as possible. My name is Nikolai Advalopkin. I am a solutions architect here at Sauce Labs and solution architect basically just means that um, I've been in the IT industry since 2008 and I've been doing test automation for almost that long. I started as a manual tester and now I basically just help clients all over the world implement test automation, make it as efficient as possible. It doesn't matter which, whether it's UI or mobile or unit testing or API testing. My goal is to make every customer as successful as possible in their continuous integration, continuous delivery journey. Talking about mobile apps, mobile apps are very difficult. For anyone that's done web testing or web automation, when we transition to mobile automation, it is way, way, way more complicated, simply because there are so many devices and there are so many different problems that can occur and you can see there are stuff like we need to think about how to test hardware compatibility, network connectivity, there are different operating system flavors, right? The same Android version can actually behave differently on a Samsung device versus an HTC device because they throw different skins on that. Um, and Apple, for example, makes testing and automation extremely difficult for all of us that want to interact with it externally. Android makes it much easier. So there's all these challenges that we have to overcome. Here are some examples of some possible issues, right? We can have layout issues, different, the same exact application can have lay, different layouts on different mobile devices. Uh, we can have device incompatibility, right? your application may work on one version of iOS, on a different version, it may not work at all. Um, there could be operating system issues, network issues, um, authentication issues, uh, so many different types of issues that we don't typically encounter on web because web is just much more mature. And uh, so we're gonna be talking a lot about strategy here. So, the best way to tackle not only automation of mobile, but also testing of mobile is to think about the mobile test pyramid. Uh, this was actually something introduced by um, Quo Ding. If you're not familiar with him, look him up. He's very well versed in mobile automation. We also have Wim Sells. He's in the Netherlands. Um, he's our, our solution architect. He's probably the most knowledgeable um, mobile solutions architect, a uh, mobile person I've ever met in my life besides Quo Ding. So um, we have him here on our team. And so we're lucky to get all of his input. Uh, but basically, if, you, if you're if you familiar with the automation pyramid for web, this is really similar, but you just want to think in terms of um, having most of your automation. Uh, if you have uh, a browser application testing in mobile, you want to have that happening in the browser level. Then you want to be doing uh, a little bit less in emulators and simulators, and we'll talk about all the reasons why. And then the lowest amount of automation you want to be doing in real devices, and here you'll be doing stuff like non-functional requirements, right, such as like GPS, networking, and all that kind of stuff, and usability and functional testing you can be doing in real devices as well. And we'll talk about the pros and cons of each of these options. So desktop browsers, and when I talk about desktop browsers, I'm specifically talking about desktop browsers on mobile, right? We're, we're all about mobile testing here, but we do have to keep in mind that on mobile, in, in the realm of mobile testing, you can have a desktop browser inside of a mobile device, which functions differently than a desktop browser outside of a mobile device, unless it's a, a responsive browser that's just a responsive app that's just simply being displayed on a device. And then there's also um, native applications, right? Those are like the Android and iOS applications we develop and download to our phones. And then there are even like hybrid applications, which are can be an application we develop, but inside of those, they have a browser that we have to navigate. So desktop browsers on mobile devices. 
Um, the advantages of them are fast execution a desktop browser on a mobile device and um, just execute stuff. Um, it's scalable because you can have multiple um, devices running different browsers and you don't have to worry uh, about installing or anything like that. And it's cross-platform, especially if you have responsive web applications, um, then you're, you could pre, can be pretty sure that your functionality will work across all the devices. What you have to start worrying about is the layouts and uh, the renderings of the application. Um, yeah, so here, that's the, the, which is the negative. Um, the rendering is different, so um, you can't be doing visual testing. No native in integration, which means that you can't be using your keyboards or incoming calls. That really has nothing to do with uh, with the mobile device, and it's also just not a not a device. Um, so what you can do on with desktop browsers um, is you can do system testing. So you can use isolated browsers testing uh, full functional validations. Uh, you can do responsive design. You can do cross browser and you can do overall visual layout testing through desktop browsers. Uh, now let's talk about emulators and simulators. Emulators and simulators are basically, um, they're like, think of them like virtual machines of an operating system for mobile, right? You can have an iOS uh, simulator or an Android emulator, and they're just like little virtual machines that you can run either locally or in the cloud. And so the nice thing is about them is that it's really easy to set up. You just download them, install them and run them. And I'll show you guys, I'll show you guys a lot of this here live today instead of just talking only theory. Um, they're scalable because again, they're just like little virtual machines or even you can think about e even potentially containers. You can have multiple of them running on your uh, local machine and um, it's really easy to run them in parallel. Um, and they do have native API integration, like you can test incoming calls, um, ge geolocations, and you can test native elements. How does your native application actually behave on an emulator or a simulator? Um, so for Android, the negative about this is that you get basically a vanilla version of Android, which is actually not realistic to what exists in the real world. So for example, if we use a real device with let's say Samsung or HTC, those actually don't have vanilla versions on them. They will throw on their own configurations and their own applications on there that will force the devices to behave differently. So if you want the ultimate user experience, you have to use a real device for Android, for example. Um, you can't know about the resource usage, right? If you are worried that your application is highly resource intensive, uh, the CPU and memory are basically just of the host, not of an actual physical device. Uh, there's no real interoperability, which means you don't have like Bluetooth or network conditions, and they're not optimized for speed. What you'll notice is that emulators and simulators, especially running in the cloud, tend to be pretty slow. So what we can do in uh, emulators and simulators and the type of testing and automation we can do are functional flows, right? We can navigate through our applications, making sure that the screen-to-screen -screen flows are working. Um, we can test incoming calls, GPS, and so on. Um, we can be testing to see how our application actually looks in the emulators and simulators and if it looks okay. Um, and of course, you can be doing touch interactions, right? Swiping, zooming, that kind of stuff, depending on the application. Now, uh, the third kind of, the third uh, category of mobile automation and mobile testing are real devices. So the really nice thing about real devices are that you get basically um, the real condition of the device that you want to test, right? I would say majority of our customers come to us for iOS devices simply because they are really expensive to procure. I mean, imagine if you want to test the latest 
iOS version and on a, you know, let's say iPhone X, you have to go out and spend, you know, a thousand bucks to get that one single iPhone to be able to test. And so um, the real nice thing about having Sauce Labs and uh, real devices is that you get many of them and you get the real native conditions. So if you want to test like um, NFC or Bluetooth and all that kind of stuff, you get it in the real device. Uh, they're much faster than emulators because they're actually using a real device, right? The real device may have what, like two, four gigs of RAM on it. And so if you want to use your, run your applications, they'll be really fast as compared to emulators and simulators. Um, and it's just the real thing. Basically you get everything that you want to test um, on a real device. Um, the negatives of it are that they're not as efficient in terms of cost as emulators and simulators or even browsers, just because again, every single device costs like a thousand bucks. And so you, of course, if we're acquiring those for you and there's a limited quantity, right? It's, it's harder, they're not as cost efficient. So we have to think about um, how we utilize our real devices to get the biggest bang for the buck from them. Um, new device means procurement, right? You have to go out and get the real device. Um, you, uh, different, I guess, iOS apps need to be signed with development distribution certificates and provisioning profiles. So uh, what I mentioned kind of in the beginning, iOS doesn't make testing and automation easy right now as compared to Android. With Android, usually you can uh, release a build of an application and you can just start testing it, whether automated or manually. With iOS, it's drastically harder. I'll give you guys an example and I'll even show you guys it. That, for example, if you want to run an application through an emulator or simulator, you have to produce a totally different build of an iOS app than for a real device. For a real device, you produce an IPA file. For an um, emulator simulator, you produce a .app file, which you then have to zip up and upload. This, that's is just some of the complications that iOS introduces. Um, and it's difficult to scale, of course, right? Because um, if you want many devices to run on and uh, your budget only allows you five devices, you know, that means that you can only run five devices in parallel at the same time, while of course, emulator simulators, you can have much more sessions. Uh, but so what can we use real devices for? Uh, usability testing, right? Uh, be, uh, so you can do stuff like actual clicking, touch actions, native dropdowns. Uh, you can do performance, right? How how well does your application behave on an actual real device? Uh, you can do native in API integrations like testing calls, GPS, and so on. Uh, visuals, right? Making sure that your application actually looks like you want it to look on those devices. Um, especially with Android, right? You get the real operating system with all the native skins and all the potential other breakages. So if you want to, you know, make sure that the key pieces of the functionality are behaving as you want them to behave. You could use a real Android device here. Um, and then of course, the specific browsers you can test here as well, like uh, Safari on iOS, um, which you know only comes with an iOS device. You can't, for example, install Safari on an Android device. Cool, so here's just a recap of the mobile testing pyramid. So at the very bottom, we're using browsers. You can do system testing and responsive design. For emulators and simulators, you can do functional flows and visual. And then up here in the last part of the pyramid, you can be doing visuals and usability, and you can be testing real life conditions like performance testing.